Good morning. Welcome to those of you who are here in church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us for our celebration of the solemnity of Corpus Christi, the body and blood of Christ. We want to offer a special welcome to all of you fathers and father figures who are here with us today. May the Lord bless you in your fatherly role. On this day, we rejoice in our belief that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. Body, blood, soul, and divinity. This has been our consistent Catholic belief and teaching since the time of the apostles. Jesus gives us his entire self at every Mass, and we are challenged to do the same. That is, to give Jesus our entire selves in return. Today's Mass is a good time to ask ourselves if we truly give Jesus all he deserves. Do you give Jesus your life, your heart, your mind, your hopes and dreams, your fears and worries, your past, your present, and your future. <clears throat> Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Donald. The preacher is Father Francis. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of Christ our Lord be with you all. Let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for his mercy. He has fed us with the finest wheat and satisfied us with honey from the rock. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him, says the Lord. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. You nourish us by this sacred mystery and make us holy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to the people of goodwill. We give you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God, Father. Lord God, Heavenly King. Lord God, Heavenly King. We are the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament 
have left us a memorial of your passion, we pray. Grant to us to so revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father and the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine, and being a priest of God Most High, he blessed Abram with these words. Blessed be Abram by God Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your foes into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. The word of the Lord. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. Lord, praise forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power the Lord will stretch forth from Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splinter. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. It's forever. In the line of Melchizedek. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was handed over took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, You proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Lo, the angel's food is given to the pilgrim who has stricken. See the children spread from heaven which on dogs may not be spent. Truth the agent types fulfilling, Isaac bound a victim willing, Paschal lamb its lifeblood spilling, manna to the fathers sent. Very bread, good shepherd, tend us. Jesu of your love, befriend us. You refresh us, you defend us. Your eternal goodness send us in the land of life to see. You who all things can and know, who on earth such food bestow, grant us with your saints, though lowest, 
where the heavenly feast you show, fellow heirs and guests to be, amen, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus spoke to the crowds about the kingdom of God, and he healed those who needed to be cured. As the day was drawing to a close, the twelve approached him and said, Dismiss the crowd so that they can go to the surrounding villages and farms and find lodging and provisions, for we are in a deserted place here. He said to them, Give them some food yourselves. They replied, Five loaves and two fish are all we have, unless we ourselves go and buy food for all these people. Now the men there numbered about 5,000. Then he said to his disciples, Have them sit down in groups of about 50. They did so and made them all sit down. Then, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing over them, broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. They all ate and were satisfied. And when the leftover fragments were picked up, they filled twelve wicker baskets. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. First off, I want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers who are here. Um, Happy Father's Day to you guys. And uh, we also want to acknowledge uh, people who have been father figures, uh, men uh, who have been like coaches or teachers or uh, um, male influences on uh, boys and girls and giving them uh, sharing in a, in a father's role, especially those who teach how to love God and how to, uh, uh, how to listen to him and to find their way closer to God. So today is an important solemnity. It comes right after last week's solemnity, which is the Holy Trinity. And both the body and blood of Christ and Holy Trinity are highly theological truths. They're spiritual mysteries, heavenly mysteries of faith. So let me read to you a summation of this, the meaning of this feast day and of communion. This uh, is, uh, just listen, don't take notes. You can put your pens down, don't worry. Jesus said, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and abides in me and I in him. The Eucharist is the heart and the summit of the church's life. For in it, Christ associates his church and all her members with his sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, offered once for all on the cross to his Father. By this sacrifice, 
He pours out the graces of salvation on his body, which is the church. So this solemnity is associated with the church as also being the body of Christ. But it's not that, um, that teaching. This is about the communion itself, the element of the body of Christ, the body and blood of Christ that we receive at communion. This, this element is the body of Christ in a way completely beyond what the church shares in the bot being the body of Christ. We are looking at the mystery of the Eucharist as being the complete, the whole body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus. You have heard in the past couple years that bishops and priests are very conscious that there was a a survey by the Pew uh, Research um, uh, um, outfit. Anyway, they that a third of Catholics don't believe that the a host is actually the body of Christ. So let me introduce you to a teenager who many of you have already heard about and met. He's an Italian teenager who died at the age of 15 in 2006. And in 2020, Pope Francis went to Assisi, where this boy's body is, um, you can see it, in the church of Assisi, and he was beatified. Beatified, that is one step away from being canonized. Um, what were you doing when you were 15 that you could have been canonized? <laughs> I don't think very many people, you know, so who is he? His name is Carlo, Carlo Acutis. And he was born in um, 1991. His parents were living in London, and after he was born, they went back to Italy, where he grew up and was raised. And he had a, a, a very strong uh, devotion to God that his family um, couldn't understand. Um, I'll get back to that in just a minute. Uh, let me talk about how he died when he was 15. He died of leukemia. And he was diagnosed with leukemia, and it was a virulent form of leukemia that just, it was called galloping, uh, they called it galloping leukemia, a phrase I'd never heard before. Um, and he suffered intensely because his, leg, his, his limbs were swollen and uh, nurses and doctors knew that other people who had this form of cancer, they uh, were, that the patient is suffering. However, he didn't complain. He would be asked, how are you? And he would say, I'm, uh, I'm okay. Um, and he... Uh, took in his suffering, and he said, he, can, he confided to people, I'm offering this suffering for Pope Benedict XVI. Now, why was he um, praying for Pope Benedict XVI? Well, only the year before, Pope John Paul II had died. This is uh, talking about 2006. So in 2005, um, Pope John Paul died. Uh, two weeks later, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth was elected pope, and so uh, the death of this boy happened a, a little less than a year later. And so he offered his sufferings for Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, who would be pope until 2013, and um, and then he said, uh, and for the church and for those who suffer in the world. He had this spirituality of the offering of our suffering for these intentions. And let's um, 
go through a couple more of these, uh, the facts about him, and then we're going to listen to him. So from, an young, from a young age, Carlo seemed to have a special love for God, even though his parents weren't particularly devout. His mother said, before Carlo, the only times I went to church were when I was baptized, confirmed, and married. Does that sound familiar? Um, so, um, uh, but her son changed all that. Uh, as a young child, before he made his first communion, Carlo had picked up the rosary and loved to pray the rosary. Things changed after he received his first Holy Communion. He went to Mass as often as he could, and he made Holy Hour, a Holy Hour before Mass or after Mass. He went to confession weekly, and he asked his parents to take him to pilgrimage places, especially places associated with the saints. And Assisi would have been one of those places because he, had re he, he requested before he died that he be buried in Assisi. And also to take him to places where there had been Eucharistic miracles. And the miracles that we're talking about are extraordinary manifestations of of the body of Christ and actual blood coming from the hosts. Um, there was a, a, in Italy, in the year uh, something like 700, um, so many centuries ago, uh, an event where the host became flesh. And modern, uh, modern people, 20th century and 21st century um, examinations of the substance of that host, which has been preserved, is that it's uh, a muscle, a human muscle that comes from a heart. And, um, and they, you know, in modern uh, science has looked at the blood and the blood, the, the blood itself and the blood uh, using uh, you know, modern um, things, it, uh, uh, they examine it and in other Eucharistic miracles. And the evidence is that in all around the world, when there have been extraordinary events like this, where the host somehow, and, you know, and you know, we're skeptical people over here in America. You know, we're very skeptical about these things. Don't worry. If you're skeptical, so am I. But this is what the evidence says. And the evidence apparently is very consistent that it's the same blood type, type AB, which is common in the Middle East. Well, anyway, um, he wanted to go to these places and asked his parents, and his parents must have been, you know, filled with a lot of questions. You know, how, you know, is this real? Is this, um, what, um, is this uh, true? Well, um, Carlo, his witness, witness to the faith led to a deep conversion in his mother, not his dad. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Just, we need, um, but um, that the mother, she, um, and the, the priest who is promoting the cause for sainthood for young Carlo, says uh, that testifies that Car that uh, his parents were dragged to church almost every day. It wasn't the other way around where the parents dragged the child. It was the child dragging his parents, and he managed to get and to convince others in his family to receive communion daily. Uh, as a kid at school, he was known for defending uh, kids who were picked on, uh, especially uh, disabled children. And when there was uh, a friend of his whose parents were getting a divorce, he, Carlo made a special effort to include his friend in, um, in his family, the Acutis family. Now, what was uh, Carlo like? Well, he was... In, he was in love with computers, and he was also a programmer. 
And he built a website that is, um, that is very uh, available, um, cataloging and promoting those Eucharistic miracles that I referred to. That, um, and these can be downloaded and looked at. And again, um, you're, it will quest, make us question our skepticism. Um, on at this site, he says, the more often we receive the Eucharist, the more we will become like Jesus, so that on this earth we will have a foretaste of heaven. There's a hymn that, uh, that we say the words to often in, in our mass, or in our prayers, O sacred banquet, in which Christ becomes our food. The memory of his passion is celebrated. The soul is filled with grace and the future glory and a taste of future glory is given to us. But let's listen to some of the words of this teenage boy and um, some of the things that he said. Um, Carlo was firmly convinced that the consecration was a privilege at the Mass when Father holds up the, the Eucharist, uh, or when he uh, um, prays over the Eucharist the, and the words of Jesus, this is my body, this is my blood. Those G words that are Jesus speaking through the priest. He said, who can intercede for us more than a God who offers himself to God? During the consecration, we must beg God the Father for grace through the merits of his only son, Jesus Christ. His holy wounds, his most precious blood, and through the tears and sorrows of the Virgin Mary, who as his mother intercedes for us more than anyone else. At the, consecra at the end of the consecration, Carlo used to repeat, through the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, I present to you all my petitions, and I beg you to hear me. He also liked to repeat a prayer that a cloistered monk once taught him. Wounds of Christ, sources of love and mercy, speak on our behalf in the presence of the Divine Father and obtain for us internal transformation. After receiving communion every day, Carlo would be in the habit of telling Jesus, Jesus, make yourself at home. Live within me as if it were your own dwelling. And he also said, you can go straight to heaven if you avail yourself of the Eucharist every day. And another line, Jesus is very creative because he hides in a little piece of bread and only God could do something so incredible. He was 10 years old when he said that. Um, uh, just a, a precocious uh, faith. And so I want to finish this reflection about the meaning of Holy Communion in, uh, in our own, from our own catechism, because there are effects of Holy Communion that are important to us of receiving. And from the catechism, it, uh, it states these um, few things. Holy Communion augments our union with Christ. The principal fruit of receiving the Eucharist in Holy Communion is an intimate union with Christ Jesus. Indeed, the Lord said, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. Another thing that communion does, it preserves, increases, and renews the life of grace received in baptism. Holy Communion separates us from sin. The Eucharist strengthens our charity, which tends to be weakened by daily life. This is our catechism. Living charity wipes away venial sins by uh, Christ, uh, by giving himself to Christ, uh, to us, by giving himself to us, Christ revives our love and enables us to break our disordered attachments to creatures and root ourselves in him. And finally, 
The Eucharist preserves us from future mortal sins. And the Eucharist makes the church, uh, th those who receive Eucharist, oh, the, the Eucharist makes the church. Those who receive the Eucharist are united more closely to Christ, and through it Christ unites them all to all the faithful in one body. So this is our reflection for today, for the the Feast of Corpus Christi. It challenges our apathy. It challenges our skepticism. It challenges us at very deep places where we resist surrendering to a mystery that is beyond our logic and our understanding. It is a mystery of faith, and it has been consistent since the early church. And we heard the words of St. Paul today, of that, the, what he received and what he had heard at his time he was writing to the Corinthians. So things going back to the first apostles that Jesus truly gives us himself in this sacrament, the sacrament that gives us his eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. All things are invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. God is in God. <coughs> God, light from light. True God from true God. God and not me. All things were made for us and In peace, we pray to the Lord for the needs of all of his people. By offering his body and blood for us, Jesus reconciles the world to the Father. Therefore, we can present our needs to God with confidence. In thanksgiving to God for our Catholic faith and for the many ways he shows his love for us, especially through the gift of the body and blood of Jesus in the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord that we who eat the one bread of Christ's body and drink the one chalice of Christ's blood may become like Jesus and pour out our lives in serving others. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayers. that all Christians, as the body of Christ, might receive, might strive to overcome the racism, prejudice, divisions, and violence in our society. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the ongoing spiritual renewal of St. Dominic's parish, that we would receive the Eucharist with humility, desire, and commitment to our relationship with the Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. On this Father's Day, we pray for fathers and stepfathers, grandfathers and godfathers, and all men who serve young people as teachers and coaches, priests and counselors, for strength and tenderness, courage and wisdom, generosity and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. 
for all graduates and students that they might continue to grow in wisdom and grace and that they and their families might have a restful summer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, For the repose of the soul of Nanita Estavilo, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, for all the intentions in our book of intentions and for those that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Most generous Father, you would provide for all our needs with the sublime gift of your Son in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist. Receive our prayers through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offering we here present to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ Jesus our Lord. For at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come, the saving memory of memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise 
nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of heaven, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 God of Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Come, Son, in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Come, Son, in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration so that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this, these, these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, Jesus himself took bread. He gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and gathered, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband our Holy Father Dominic, our Sister Catherine of Siena, St. Lorenzo Ruiz, and all the apostles, blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and char charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our bishop, the order of bishops, and all the clergy and ministers of your entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember especially Nenita Estavio and all those whose who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. We remember especially our fathers, our grandfathers, all those men who have been fatherly towards us at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. 
there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from all of our fears and our anxieties as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Let's offer one another the sign of the Father's love. On you say, Qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you say, Qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you say, Qui tolis peccata Let's pray together our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your most precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few minutes. We want to wish all of our fathers, our stepdads, our adoptive fathers, all those men who've been fatherly to us, a happy Father's Day. We pray that it would be a good day for you. And I'd ask fathers, stepdads, and adoptive fathers to please stand. Grandfathers, please stand. And I'd ask the rest of us to raise our hands in the blessings over them. Good and gracious God, you showed us the importance of fathers when you chose Joseph to care for your son. Bless all the fathers who share your unconditional love with their children. Bring comfort to those fathers who have lost children or who are estranged from their children and those who mourn the loss of their beloved fathers. Share your blessings with all those who yearn for a father's love and heal those wounded by a father's failures. Bless all men who mentor and nurture children who are not their own and become fathers to children who need them. Help us, the sons and daughters of their hearts and bodies, to return their love and honor them as Jesus honored Joseph. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy Father's Day. Next weekend, all our masses will take up a collection for Peter's Pence. This money will be used by the Pope for his personal charitable projects throughout the world. Please be generous and support our Holy Father's mission to the poor. Our parish's pastoral council has pre prepared a short survey for leaders of the many ministry, ministries and groups in our parish. This survey is to help our parish move forward together when we start our new year of parish activities in the fall. Ministry and group leaders, please stop by the parish office to pick up one of the, these surveys. There's more information about this in the bulletin. The Dominican friars this week will be out of town Monday through Friday at a gathering of our entire province in the Bay Area. We can only find priests for the following masses, Monday, 8 a.m. and 6 p.m., Tuesday, 6 p.m., Wednesday, 8 a.m. The other mass times will be communion services only, not masses. Sorry for this inconvenience. So pray for all of us friars as we get together in Oakland, 160 of us all in one place, that we might uh, listen carefully to one another. The Lord be with you. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you all and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>